In this video, we're going to solve a more response spectrum analysis problem uh, that is shown on the figure. We have rigid beams and flexible columns. Notice the flexible columns include a moment of inertia of 1,400 inches to the fourth, a cross-sectional area of 50 inches square. Uh, the cross-sectional area is going to be important in developing the stiffness matrix. So we'll have to ensure that this is a reasonable cross-sectional area. Uh, we are solving first for the periods and the mode shapes, and then we will find the base shear by the square of the sum of the squares for a response spectrum found in Chopra figure 6.9.5. The steps in RISA are as follows. We will set parameters, both the description and solution parameters, followed by a consistent set of units. Then we'll modify the drawing grid uh, consistent with the sketch. Uh, I will create the model both the uh, area and material properties as well as the boundary conditions and then we'll input appropriate loads including the response spectrum. Uh, finally we'll input load combinations and perform a solution which includes the dynamic solution to determine uh, the periods and the mode shapes followed by a static solution to determine the base shear. Once we get RISA started we'll check the global parameters uh, this is an example. We will check uh, the seismic. Uh, all the parameters here uh, should be left as defaults. We will input the response spectrum as a separate file. And then uh, what we do next is we ensure that the units are consistent with the units we have, which they are. And we finally go into modifying uh, the grid. We'll use uh, one space of 24 feet in the x direction in three spaces at 12 feet for the y direction. That will give us a, a grid like so. Um, this point then we go in and create our members. Um, so we'll pull up this member and draw members um, menu. We're going to use a general shape. So it is a steel shape so general steel it's for the columns. We'll create a member using this shape selection. Uh, we'll add it. Uh, we're going to call this column. It will have an area of 50 square inches. Uh, we'll just use a moment of inertia along the y-axis of 1. This is 1400 and then uh, this will be 1401 and I will change those to 1's uh, because otherwise we won't get a result. Um, we'll okay that. Uh, cancel, pull this up again, and there's my new shape. I will add it. Notice this went back to concrete, so I have to make sure it goes to steel, columns, and we start drawing our members. So we have three columns on each side. And we also have rigid beams, so I will pull up the draw members tool again, and this time I'm going to assign a section that is rigid for the beams. I don't give us a very stiff beam. Apply. We'll create three beams, and there is our model. The next thing we need to do is um, add the boundary conditions. So we have fixed supports at the base. Um, the other thing is this is a two-dimensional problem. So as we discussed in previous videos, we have to make sure that these are fixed out of the plane of the model. And we have the two fixed supports. We have to go back and ensure that all the other joints stay in two dimensions. So I have to make sure that they're free to translate into the plane and rotate. And we'll simply add that boundary condition to each node. This point we need to do is put in loading. Uh, we have at the top, we're going to have a concentrated load of 50 kips. And it's going to be located at 12 feet, so right in the middle. We then do this again for the other two floors, but with 100 feet, with 100 kips. 
And then we have to include a response spectrum. Uh, we have to go to Modify, Response Spectrum Library, uh, and in here there's a number of different response spectra that, has, that have already been inputted. Um, the one we're going to use is Chopra figure 6.9.5. So when I edit this, this is the values that you have to put into this response spectrum uh, all the way down to so I will put it there. You can uh, put those values into RISA. Uh, you create a whole new response spectrum. So at 0 0.8, 0 0.75 to 0 0.25, and then the last from 0.2 to 0 0.005. Um, so that's a response spectrum. Here's what it looks like as a single plot. So this is a spectra that is in Chopra, uh, figure 6.9.5. Uh, once we have this response spectrum, we have to go and create load combinations. And our load combinations will include a the response spectrum along the X, uh, and also that is going to be factored by 0.25 and then also the response spectrum uh, not the response spectrum but the other loading uh, the static loading so we'll include that and we'll use the full load uh, this was discussed in the previous uh, video and so there's my uh, full model my loading and now what I have to do is do two different types of solutions a dynamic solution the eigen solution and response spectra analysis and so uh, solve and here we have um, different choices for combination methods so we have the complete quadratic combination the square root of the sum of the squares and then also Gupta um, so we're going to use the square root of the sum of the squares x direction uh, we're going to use 5% damping and so we'll have to go on the spectra we have to go down until we find the uh, Chopra figure 6.9.5 which you will have to input in to your uh, RISA program and we start the solution um, there's a an error so we'll check the load combinations uh, the load combinations appear to be okay oh this should be one not uh, dead load so we'll put that as one and now we can solve the problem this parameters don't change so start the solution and there's our period 0.354 by comparison this solution was uh, performed using single generalized single degree of freedom case and a um, multi degree of freedom analysis and here's what I got with the generalized single degree of freedom case 0 0.3405 I get 0 0.348 with RISA uh, multi degree of freedom I get 0 0.3418 the mode shape that was used in uh, the generalized single degree of freedom is this phi uh, the eigenvectors from multi degree of freedom are here here are the multi uh, the RISA results very close all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, of course, they should be close. Um, this, however, did not include the axial uh, stiffness in the development of the stiffness matrix. So there should be some results a little different. Now, to go back to RISA, we can uh, go and solve this a second time uh, for single load combination to get the static results. And now that we have solved for the static results, we can bring up the joint reactions and notice the joint reactions your total reaction is going to be 157 kips which compares very well with both the generalized single degree of freedom case as well as the multi degree of freedom case I hope this was useful